It's still family owned and operated, now on to seven generations, and the eighth generation has just begun working for the company. So we uh, hope they don't screw it up and it'll be family run for a few more generations. But uh, Goslings all started with William Goslin, who was a wine and spirit merchant in London, England. And he wanted to expand his business into the new colonies, particularly Virginia. So he chartered a ship called the Mercury and put 10,000 pounds sterling worth of wine and spirits on this ship. So in 1806, 10,000 pounds worth of wine and spirits was basically a pirate ship full of booze. So it was a lot of liquor. And they set sail across the Atlantic. Uh, William's son, James Gosling, was chosen to, uh, to head up the voyage. And they spent 91 days at sea. The charter ran up. And the captain said, we have to take you to the closest British port. So they dropped James in uh, St. George's Bermuda with all this liquor. And James took a look, a look around the island and said, you know what, I think I'm just going to settle right here. He wasn't too concerned about pressing on to America. So they began selling these wines of spirits on the island. He used to say they were very popular there, but they were missing something, and that was rum. What they bought from Europe was port, sherry, brandy, Bordeaux wines, things like that. So they looked around the geography. For those of you who have been there, it's a small island, a beautiful little island. It's about 21 square kilometers, so there's not enough land to grow any sort of significant quantities of sugar cane that you would need to produce a lot of rum. So they began sourcing rum from all over the West Indies, bringing it to the island, where they would blend it, age it in barrels, and then sell it to the locals. So they created their own style of rum by blending different rums from all over the West Indies. Now, originally, when you wanted to buy Gosling's rum, it was sold on draft only. So they didn't have a bottling facility at all. You would have to take your own bottle or a bucket or whatever you could find and go to the liquor store, and they would fill that bucket or bottle right out of the barrel that the rum was aging in. This was done as a practice that we still do today. Our Somerset store on Cambridge Road in Somerset, you can still uh, they see that they have the big barrel of rum in the wall there, and you can take in your own bottle. So it's our, our form of recycling, I suppose. But you can still get draft rum on the island. But after World War I, the demand of the rum really began to increase. Tourism began to play an important role in the Indian economy. So we wanted to make sure that tourists and uh, people could get their hands on, on Gossip's rum. So they began to look at bottling the rum. Now, there's no uh, bottles or glass production or anything like that on the island. So one day, they were at the British Navy officers' mess hall, where all the British Navy elite would hang out and drink and socialize. And they stumbled across a large supply of empty champagne bottles. So we know the British Navy was having a, a grand old time in Bermuda. So they reclaimed these old champagne bottles and began filling the rum into these bottles. Now, they didn't do any labeling of whatsoever with these bottles. They put a cork in them and they put a little bit of black sealing wax on the top of the bottle. And for many, many years, locals would come in and, you know, there was no label on the rum. They would just ask for it, give me the rum with the black seal. And it was probably about 50 or 60 years of locals asking for the rum with the black seal before Gosling's finally clued in and said, hey, why don't we call this rum black seal? So that's where the barrel jug and seal on our flagship rum comes from. There's certainly no seals in Bermuda, no matter how much rum you had to drink. Uh, there are a few at the aquarium, but that's about it. And I think we had one blow in uh, in a big storm, and they nicknamed them Stormy the Seal, and they nursed him back to health and then sent them out to Cape Cod. <laughs> so uh, black seal, again, the flagship of our rum is the largest export off of the island. It's a uh, beautiful, dark, rich, and full flavor. You have a, a little bit in front of you, so I'm going to invite you guys to have a little taste. It's not like a wine tasting. You don't want to take a big gulp and swirl it around your mouth. It is 40% alcohol, 80 proof. So I recommend just take a small sip. Yeah, it's a dark colored one there. Take a small sip, swirl it around your mouth a little bit, and swallow it. It's really going to leave a nice, uh, nice finish on your mouth. And that's the quality. The sign of a good quality spirit is the finish, the taste that it leaves. But also, it's got a wonderful aroma. I'm going to ask a question. Can anyone pick any aromas off of the black seal that you smell anything that, uh, that comes to mind right away? There is a lot, and don't be shy because everyone's got a different palate so they can smell different things. But there's one fruit that comes to mind whenever I smell black seal first. Can anyone guess? Banana. Banana? That's good. You've had black seal before, haven't you? <laughs> now, banana, the aroma of banana comes from the charred oak barrel that we aged the black seal rum in. Now, we use a once-used bourbon barrel. Does anyone know why we would use a bourbon barrel? <coughs> Any ideas? Well, they're cheap. <laughs> <laughs> to, get, to get a brand new barrel, five, six hundred dollars U.S., depending on the quality of the barrel. And bourbon manufacturers, by law, have to use a new American oak barrel in order for it to be considered bourbon whiskey, one of the many laws of bourbon. Rum, they don't have too many laws. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. So, uh, we get the
these old bourbon barrels, and they're great for aging the rum because they've been aging bourbon for five or six years for the particular barrels we get from Black Seal. So we'll get that barrel and then we're going to burn the inside of that barrel all over again. And that caramelizes the sugar that from the bourbon and creates a layer of charcoal which helps to filter the rum as it sits in that barrel and ages. We're going to learn more about aging rum when we taste our, our last rum, which is the Gossage Family Reserve Old Rum. We're going to bring that out after dessert. Really a special rum. And I'm certainly glad you guys took the time to come in and learn about cooking in Bermuda with our great chefs and as well about rum. So the Black Seal is a three to six year old blend of rum. It's made up of three different distillates that are all aged independently and then blended together according to a secret family recipe that's been handed down over seven generations of the Gossip family. The current president, Malcolm Gossip, he's the seventh generation. He's the only one that knows it besides our master blender, Kenny Simons. Now, Kenny, we keep him locked in a cage down in Bermuda, and he's not allowed to travel or do anything dangerous. And uh, Malcolm actually lives here in Weston, Massachusetts. He moved out here about five years. So 200 years, and the Gossip's finally made it to, to the United States. But he's here to settle and uh, working on marketing the brands overseas. Now, uh, with your meal, we have a lovely cocktail that's coming around for you to enjoy, and it's called the Dark and Stormy. Who's never had a dark and stormy in this room? Few of you. It's very popular here in Massachusetts. Things a lot of history between Bermuda and uh, and here in all Boston. All the sailors. Oh, exactly. All the sailors. The two ports of Bermuda race. A great event for us. Okay, so the Darkest Stormies are national drink in Bermuda, it's made up of black seal rum and ginger beer. Is everyone familiar with ginger beer? It's not ginger flavored beer. It's like ginger ale on steroids, basically. <laughs> lots of ginger root, lots of flavor. Uh, we actually started making our own ginger beer recently. There's another ginger beer that we have in Bermuda called Barrett's, which is a really nice, good quality ginger beer. And that was the ginger beer we used on the island, but it was very hard to get overseas. So we approached a company called Polar Beverages. You guys know Polar? Right in Worcester, Mass. Did I say that right? Yeah, Worcester, Mass. Right? <laughs> Worcester, Mass. So we made this ginger beer here in Boston because we wanted to have it available in the States to make what we think is the ultimate dark and stormy. So it's not a black ginger beer. It's a trademark drink, which means we own the right to make the dark and stormy. So whenever you get a dark and stormy here, you, you're, you're sure that you have the black seal rum and then a ginger beer of your choice. Yes, you can okay, stir it, you can suck the rum off the top if you want to get something to you. We've got lots of rum in this middle of the day. So you'll notice that the rum is floating on top of the ginger beer, and that's where the name Dark and Stormy came from. Uh, some of the sailors would look at that and said, that looks like a storm cloud, neither a fool or a dead man would sail under. So they nicknamed it the Dark and Stormy. So I hope you guys enjoy, and uh, we're ready, chefs. We're ready. I'm going to turn it back over to the chefs and enjoy the rest of your meal. I'll talk to you soon.